Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a second time. This is a regularly, regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen in the town of Sunderland. It's May 31st, uh, 2016. I'd like to call the order 604. Town of Sunderland residents, here we go. We have one piece of uh, agenda item tonight, and that's to, uh, and hopefully we can agree. Um, we never will say anything is a certain in this place, but the sole purpose of our meeting tonight is to just chief candidates review and go forward with our next steps. Uh, any questions from the audience? Okay, any questions from the board? Let's go, Mr. Who wants to start? Well, I think David can go. David, you can go. <laughs> I can. Go ahead, David. All right. Well, well, how do we want to approach this? Well, if you want, you can just make a motion. We'll go right from there, but that'd probably be a little too simple. <laughs> so <laughs> Let's make for short meetings, though. It would make for a short meeting. <laughs> I would set the new record for length of meeting. Um, uh, the hardest part of a selectman's job, in my opinion, and we've done it for a few times, and I think most would have, most sane people would agree, this is hiring. The hiring is, especially the way that we have to do it in a uh, public um, manner. Um, sometimes you'll, you'll have people come in and the camera, especially the cameras, will not phase anybody at, at all. It's just a natural, most people don't even see the cameras. Some people see the cameras and uh, they don't necessarily respond well to them. They get very nervous. Um, sometimes sitting, for some reason, sitting in front of a board of selectmen is difficult. Um, and for us it's difficult because we're asked to make judgments on someone's capacity to perform a job um, through an hour, an hour and a half, two hour interview. Um, and hopefully we've we've got the right questions. Um, we've done our homework. We've read the resumes. We've talked to different people. Um, we've asked the right questions of ourselves. And I can personally tell you the um, the search committee was charged with providing us with um, names of people they felt could do the job. And in my opinion, I think they, they provided us with three names of people that can do the job. Two are, two, are, two are now presently employed as chiefs of police, and the other is a sergeant in a larger department. Um, and I believe all three can, in my opinion, can, can do the job. So somehow, we have to go from that to uh, the hiring process. So Scott, how would you want to start? Uh, Mr. Chair, if we could, maybe we could uh, share the, the public has seen and the public knows that as a board of three, we don't spend a lot of time talking to each other outside of these meetings. It's just because <laughs> Chris, there's like a guy, bunch of laws that say we're not supposed guys to. Guys like Chris Collins would uh, have us uh, <laughs> taken on to uh, coals if we did something like that. So maybe maybe a, a brief one uh, observation from each of the board about the three candidates' interviews, sure. and then we can go from there. Um, with the consensus gels from there, or recommendation simply jumps out, okay. uh, and I'd be happy. I'd be happy to you start. Want to start? That. Sure. If sure. I could, uh, first again uh, to echo the point about the screening committee's work, uh, not only their work but also their follow through, uh, bringing us candidates that were, were uh, thoughtful, deliberate, had all of the professional components required to come into uh, our experienced force and uh, uh, provide management and, and leadership. So that said. Um, I think we had, uh, my experience is we had uh, the three candidates, uh, one uh, in, in a sergeant's position uh, with a lot of aspiration and a lot of energy and, and, and doing not just yeoman's but really all wonderful officer's work uh, where she currently, currently is employed. Uh, a chief uh, and a second chief. Two very different communities, two very different sizes, two very different areas. And... Um, I think all, all of the candidates, my experience was all the candidates provided thoughtful, sometimes nervous, because it's an interview. It's just the way it is. Your heart rates up a little bit, and you kind of maybe punch on a question a little bit or circle back around. Um, uh, but the notes that I have here um, are strikingly similar in uh, observations, body language, style, delivery, 
the content. Everybody's seen the interviews, I, who's I'm sure here now. Um, but some of those nonverbal communications are, are very, very uh, important. They're cues. Um, and we, we know from our town administrators experience marathon Saturday that you know when, when the candidate takes a jacket off and you know puts a foot up on a chair and you go okay you're, you're still interviewing you know it's all right but style points so the body language to me was something that was uh, was very important uh, along with the content of, of the discussions both chiefs had very strong uh, had a very very strong uh, physical presence demeanor Two very different styles. One maybe a little more animated than the other. One maybe a little more relaxed. That could be proximity. That could be genuine comfort level. Uh, the answers to the questions and our interactions, again, were uh, thoughtful. There was room for pause in most responses. And that was really important to come across. Uh, so so that, that pieces of my observation are out there. That said, my overall, um, my overall recommendation or, or my overall direction would be to uh, stick with uh, the two chiefs at this point and, and let the center of my, my discussion, future discussion around the two chiefs. Not that, not that the existing uh, officer, Jalbert, Jalbert can't uh, rise to that occasion, but um, I think the two chiefs spoke a little more clearly to me about um, how we could work together. So that's my observations. David? Um, I would agree about uh, focusing on the two chiefs. I think, um, I think especially now we need um, to kind of like look at um, pulling in as much skill as we can. I think over um, for the candidate, um, and I, I agree with you. But I paid attention to a lot of um, a lot of things like that. Uh, definitely um, body language and things like that. <laughs> Those were very key things because we all had the questions there. So. Um, and also, um, as somebody recently mentioned, too, things that weren't answered or asked in the interview. Uh, those are often uh, interesting points to know, too. And um, I kind of just went in and listened to each candidate and um, then just kind of sat on it for a little while so that I, I, I kind of wanted to go through each one first before I made any kind of thoughts about which direction I was headed in. And then... Um, and I narrowed it down to two, and then I went back and forth for a good week, I'd say, you know, over the pros and the cons, and uh, and then did some additional homework. So, um, uh, and it took a little while to get to where I uh, to where I ended up, but I think uh, I think like we've said, they were all good candidates, but it's also um, you're not looking just at their skill set on paper, but you're also looking at how they would fit into the community in addition to just pure technical skills. And I think um, the role of chief is, is very important because they're a, a very important part of our community. And I think, and especially when you look at um, the interaction that the chief has really with, all, especially with youths in the community and things like that, there's a lot of, um, a lot of interaction at that level too. So I think, I think it's a very important role in, uh, in the community. So that was definitely something that I took into consideration, so. One of the, uh, one of the things I learned through the, uh, the process is that um, we kind of have to do a better job with our staff as well. And that, that hit home to me when we talked to uh, Jane um, from Munson um, with her, what I think her skill sets were. And when we asked about budget and information about budget, um, Jane, I think that was her weakest answer. And because she had uh, responded that basically it was on her personal budget was, was her str strength. And, and I would say um, on small departments, um, we, when, when the, we recognized when back 15, whatever we had the sergeant, created a sergeant position, that we wanted to give members of our department um, a path forward. 
Remember that, yeah, Scott? Absolutely. That was because when we lot. looked at the qualifications of chief, we, we look at chief as you have you have management experience. And and I and I go through the process now and I and, and when when Jane talked about um, that lack of um, experience mm -hmm. And I talked to a couple other people in the position. They said, well, it's not unusual for sergeants on a department like that not to be involved. It all depends on the chief. Well, I want a chief mm -hmm. that is going to bring the sergeant Great. and the members of the staff up. Why, why do we have a sergeant if we're not bringing, if we're not giving the sergeant? So, Brendan, my promise to you is that you're going to have that training. You're going to you're going to be an integral part of whoever our next chief is you're going to be part of that process i because that we're not giving him the tools to succeed correct so why we have a sergeant if we're not giving him that that thing so i was i was disappointed in in that answer i i also on the other side i was very um impressed with uh jane's um Excitement for the job. Sometimes you, sometimes um, we lose that. Right. We it, it becomes a, it, it becomes a job. Sure. It's no longer uh, um, something that we're that we're we're going out and we're trying to make a difference every day. And and she, to me, she told me she in an interview that I got from her, um, she was a person that rose through the ranks, um, and and I think that she's not rising. And she wants to continue to rise. That that being said, um, the search committee gave us two candidates um, that they both talk about their budget planning. They both um, have done it. They talked about develop. Uh, one of them talks about going out and getting a three million dollar or working on getting a three million dollar grant on a public safety building. Um, talking about a lot of other uh, getting grants for school research mm -hmm. or resource officers um, and those are the things that we're doing all the time um, so I don't know if I was able to eliminate one or the other real quick um, but as when I when I started thinking about the qualities um, I, I I think we need we need a strong leader. We need to have someone that has had uh, experience as a chief, um, and and I don't think we um, we had two. We actually had three candidates, but I think we had two that stood out right. in that respect. Um, so that's where I'm going right now. Where do you want to go next, there, Mr. Uh, David, any word? Um, I would have just made a motion earlier on, but, <laughs> you know, we can't be at a well. Uh, I'm ready to make a motion if you want to. But. Well, I, I'd accept a motion for discussion. Yeah. Uh, for discussion. Yep. Okay. All right. Put a motion for discussion. Uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion for uh, Mr. Eric Dimitri Dimitropoulos for discussion. A second for discussion. Okay. Missed that. <laughs> missed that. Shoot. What, why, why do you think he stands out? Um, I think based on a, a lot of it had to do with uh, around finance, for one thing. Um, I think he had a very good grasp of the financial side of it. They both had a good, a, a decent baseline grasp, but I think... He um, kind of went that extra step in terms of the things that you have to do, especially in a smaller town, to deal with the finances and, and the creativity you have to take to approach it. Um, I think I think they both can do the, the policing job and then that part of it. Um, I was, so I didn't have any issues with them both there. Um, and I think then the second thing really for me was was the um, the position of. Eric as a as an individual in the community and his role and what he has done with youth, um, the, the types of outreach and based on too on what we kind of have come to appreciate and achieve in terms of community involvement and outreach, um, 
And I think especially with a lot of the, I mean, you, you see so many stories now on both sides of the issue with, with police. And I, I think part of it is the media just loves to jump on, you know, hot button stories like this. But I think the more that we can get the police involved in the community, the less problems we're going to have overall. And we won't be reading about ourselves out there like a lot of other towns. Um, and I think that was really one of the important things I think that I that I I liked about uh, about Mr. Dimitropoulos. Scotty, well, I would say on, on the on the subject of of uh, Chief Dimitropoulos that he used the word community more than any candidate, any applicant. Mm -hmm. It seemed to just you know be a, a, a stitch in his fabric, as opposed to uh, you know. A simple uh, catchphrase, right. and I think that that stood out to me as well. That that said, um, Chief Harding's Chief Harding's proximity to the town, and meaning he lives in town, and his uh, background from private higher ed into public service through up it, on a trajectory, concluding in a leadership position. Um, is is pretty admirable work. Mm -hmm. That that yeah. said, uh, I actually followed David's sentiment, and uh, I, I lean toward uh, Chief Demetropolis from Barry. Now, we know, anybody who's done their homework can go online and look at what's going on in Barry, and I think that's more politics than policy. Personally. Just an observation. It's not that often you get a election recalls, department heads quitting, all kinds of stuff. That sounds like politics. Nothing against the town of Barry, but they they play different. Thank you, Scott. Yep. Um, I'm not I'm not going to disagree with what. Both of you said I would. My when I look at Chief Harding, um, there there's a couple things that that stood out for, to me. One was um, he was from a small town, a small town chief, and he's used to working with few full-time officers and a lot of part-time officers and, and, and how to juggle that. And Brendan can tell us in his term as the OIC, I'm sure running a schedule is not the easiest thing in the world to try to get everybody where they need to be at any particular time. And, and I do think, and, and don't get me wrong, I think there's, I think there's a, um, I think there's an art to it. I think you can go online, you get all, you can find all kinds of scheduling yeah. All kinds of scheduling uh, gurus have made yeah. all kinds of programs to make it just snap your finger and your schedule falls in. But we know in the real world that doesn't happen, does it, Brendan? In the last few months, we've been very fortunate <clears throat> to have part timers, even the full timers, that have stepped up to help cover all the ships that we've had open. And, and, and that's one of the reasons I kind of liked Chief Harding mm -hmm. because he has that experience of coming from that smaller. Smaller um, uh, group. Um, it, it's interesting because when when um, when we asked both chiefs who they think is important to meet mm -hmm. um, in the towns, none of them, none of them wanted to get to know the board of selectmen. Go figure. Yeah. <laughs> um, but why are you laughing? All right. Um, but they did, um, they were pretty universal, um, that they thought it was Im important to get to uh, meet the school principal, the town administrator. Um, one said the business, business, uh, business leaders. The other one said, uh, the fire chief. So I think both of them are, are, are small town chiefs in that respect. Barry is what, about 5,000 people, Sherry? Give or take yeah. around five thousand, so it's about the size of Deerfield. Yeah. I think they have like eight full-time, six part-time officers. Not that I've looked up their website, but I have. Um, 
So, so I think they're kind of like the size of kind of like the size of deer field. Um, uh, Chief Dimitro, uh, Dimitropoulos, um seems to have been very um, politically active, meaning that uh, seemed to be very comfortable with Steve Brewer. Um, that um, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I think uh, knowing your elected officials, elected officials, and for those that don't know Steve Brewer, he was a very uh, a tremendously capable uh, legislator, and he did a whole bunch for his his district. District, oh yeah. And I would say Steve Kulik and and a stand. This isn't done on the. Uh, Mass Pike, because it was tough to get here Friday. Up, it was absolutely. backed up. The Mass Pike was backed up on Friday. Um, both Steve and Stan are very effective legislators also. So I think that, that's kind of a good thing. I don't, I don't know if we can make a... I don't know if we can make a bad choice. I think there's just so many strongs on all three candidates. Uh, Any comments from the, the audience? Not no help at all there. <laughs> Not with a motion and a second on the table. Not with a motion. All right. So we have a motion. Anybody want any more discussion? Tom, I, I think uh, your, your point about uh, Chief Harding uh, are important uh, part of the mix. And uh, as David said earlier, in the last two weeks with windshield time or conversations with people, it's been like, watching a slow ping pong match. I don't know if we can actually go wrong with either candidate. And remember, we can announce all we want today. We still gotta negotiate. They yeah. still gotta accept the job. So this is this right. is this is for the cameras more than anything when all is said and done. This is one of those benchmark moments only allows the conversation to continue on. We start talking about the harder things. Duration, term, finances, etc. So that said, we could name someone tonight and be back at this. Gary, don't take August off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. But with your, with your points, Tom, uh, about, about Chief Harding and his size and scale, uh, my only reservation, um, and this has been something I've, I've toggled back and forth with, and I can say toggle because of what I do, um, about, about uh, Chief Demetropolis would be that, you know, coming to a smaller department may seem, and he used the term, you know, experience in a small town. I want to have that experience of a small town again. Well, some of it's not exactly the smallest of small towns. We're not, we're, this is, and we have been told by consultants, by officers, by people in other communities who have come in and, and looked at what Sunderland has. We have, we have big town problems yeah. in a small town format. We're unique. Yeah, exactly. And I use the word I use the word problems not not in any kind of disparaging way. We have big town problems in small town format. You know, whether it be public safety, infrastructure, um, uh, environmental issues, all the stuff that goes on in, in uh, larger towns, we have. We've been described in the past as you know tip of the spear on certain things, whether it be emergency preparedness or whether it be land preservation or whether it be planning or whatever. Um, so that would be the only area of concern for me with respect to uh, um, moving forward with uh, Chief Demetropolis is that we're talking about a department that's effectively half the size, effectively half the budget, effectively well, a similar land mass, but a very, very different density. Uh, we, we don't have, we don't have um, the luxury of a relatively short um, introduction to town. So that would be one area of concern for me. You know, the total integration of the department and the professional side, it's one thing. But then how much time does it take to get to know the community? You can, and again, I think the word communities came off of him naturally, like water off a duck. That said, there's still the amount of time and energy spent required to get to know the, the, the community you're actually working in, in this very, very public leadership position. So with, with, that, with that, you know, I could, I could easily be convinced to... Um, to revisit Mr. Harding in my discussions. Thank you, Scotty. You ready to vote? Uh, we have a motion for uh, Chief Demetropolis with a second for discussion. Yep. Yeah, we're ready to vote. All right. Uh, we have a motion 
on the table to appoint or to uh, select Chief Eric D. Metropolis um, as the one to move forward in this proceedings, the procedures leading to the uh, Chief of the Town of Sunderland. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. So that's the great thing about the chief, you always vote last. I know. <laughs> I changed my mind. I'm going to vote now. Okay. Um, all those against, signify by saying aye. 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 One, two. Entertain another motion. Uh, move to enter negotiations with uh, Chief Tom Harding of the uh, Town of Shutesbury for the open position here in the Town of Sunderland. Uh, second. Discussion. You can yeah, always discussion. second for discussion. Shoot. Um, no, hold on. Oh, all right. Okay. Yep. I'm good. You want to take a second? We can recess for a minute if you want. Totally. We got time. We ain't going nowhere. Yeah, sure. Let's do that for a minute. Okay. Recess. Thirty. Uh, give us a couple minutes. Let's come back here about uh, six twenty, six thirty-five. Yeah, thirty-five, thirty. That's right. All right. You walk around if you want. Um, people had an opportunity to uh, walk around, clear their heads for the thought process. Uh, David, do you want to add something? Um, I'm happy with my choice. So. Okay. All right, so we have a motion made and seconded to appoint Thomas Hardig as the, uh, the individual to move on to the next, um, towards uh, hiring a new chief in the town of Sunderland. Uh, all those in favor of Thomas Hardy, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. 2-1. Okay. Next step forward. Well, I would assume, I would, I would suggest we get correspondence immediately to the three finalists, obviously, yeah. about the status. And in, in that correspondence, uh, it's important language to include uh, that we're only proposing to begin negotiations. This is not the appointment process yet. Yeah, we have a lot of, lot of work to do. Right, with respect to that. So can you call, uh, could you call all three, please? Be better than a letter right now. Mm -hmm. um, all right, when, what do we want to do? We should, we're gonna need to talk to uh, Chief Hardy and see what his schedule's like, okay? All right, how do you want to do the, uh, Scott, do you want to do the uh, negotiations? I, I lived through a tough one with the town administrator. I might have enough you know, enough <laughs> steel now to deal with the police chief. I, I'd, I'd be happy to represent the board in that negotiation. Okay. You have, you've, been, you've been our lead in the last couple contracts, Scott. So. Okay. All right, David, you, have, you okay with that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. Any, um, so, Sherry, if you could talk to, uh, if you get work with Scott in... Uh, and uh, Chief Hardy, get them together. Okay. Um, you have all the stuff. You have the sample contracts yeah, and stuff. We get the contracts. All, all contracts in uh, town and, and, and all municipalities are public records. So absolutely easy. It's it's a no brainer. We have prior chief's contract. We have drafts. We probably have copies of the existing applicants' contracts kicking around. We do. Okay. You just uh, have to go to the town clerk's office. They're all there. Town clerk or treasurer or collector. Or accountant, they have them. Right. All right. Anything else tonight, Sherry? You got anything else for us to do tonight? No, that's it. No signatures. Any question from the uh, the residents? I'm quiet. I'm thinking about their golf game right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris. Any questions? Really? Well, that's a first. He's, he's, he's formulating. He must he's be, formulating. Yeah. He must be biting his tongue. Formulating. Back there. All right. Uh, without hearing anything else, newspaper, you got any questions? I'll call tomorrow. Okay. All right. Today. All right. <laughs> uh, 
Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion to adjourn. Made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Sherry, we are out at uh, 640.